how's everybody doing today? We're going to give it just a few more minutes just in case uh, we have anybody uh, who's waiting to get on or, or anyone who's running late. Just uh, start here in a little bit. Um, in the meantime, I just want to thank everybody for joining us today uh, for our webinar on Equine Thrush. Uh, it's hosted by Life Data Labs. Uh, my name is Corbin Delaney. Um, I'm the marketing manager here at Life Data. Um, and again, I just want to thank everybody for joining us. Uh, of course, we're here with our presenter, Mike Barker. Um, if you haven't met Mike, uh, Mike travels across the US, Canada, and Europe on behalf of Life Data. Um, he does presentations and uh, trade shows and different things to help educate the horse owners on the importance of equine nutrition, proper hoof maintenance, and really just overall hoof care. Uh, so today he's going to talk to us about equine thrush. Um, and if you look on the right hand side of your screen, uh, you should see a little menu uh, from the GoToWebinar. Uh, you can open that up and there is a, uh, a little question menu. Uh, feel free as Mike is going through this presentation to ask any questions that you may have. Uh, we won't be answering the questions until the end of the webinar. Uh, so hopefully, you know, by the time we get to the end, we've, we've answered your question. Um, but we will take a few minutes there at the end uh, for Mike to answer any of those questions. Um, so again, just at any point in time that, uh, that a question may arise, please feel free uh, to, to send us one. Um, but Mike has prepared this presentation on equine thrush, and um, looks like we've still got a couple people here joining us. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Mike and uh, let him introduce himself to you and uh, get started on this webinar. Thank you again. Thank you very much, Corbin, and we thank you for uh, joining us uh, during our webinar. Uh, and as Corbin mentioned, uh, I have the privilege to travel uh, across the U.S., uh, internationally as well, uh, speaking directly to horse owners, uh, at different horse fairs, horse expos. And it's our goal here at Life Data Labs to help uh, the horse owner improve the health of their horse. And in that, as I speak to horse owners, uh, regardless of where they may be located, there's a common denominator among these horse owners. And the, and the thing that I often hear from them over and over again is that they have a problem with thrush. They have a cycle of thrush. They can't get rid of their thrush problem. And so what we'd like to do uh, during this webinar is talk about thrush. And the first thing that we need to do is answer the question exactly what is thrush? And uh, first of all, thrush is a microbial invasion of the frog. And of course, uh, as we took a, take a look at this particular hoof here and the frog as to where it's so associated, we're going to see this black on either side of the frog itself and even when we get into the sole of the foot here we're going to see these black lines these black streaks and as we can uh, see readily this horse has been shod and at the nail hose here we see this blackness as well and, and that's bacteria that's fungi and so the microbes that we're talking about is going to be a combination of bacteria. It's going to be a combination of fungi that wants to attack this particular frog here. And, and the way that the hoof is made, we have these grooves on either side of the frog and then the central part of the frog uh, gives thrush the opportunity to take a hold. In fact, deep into the clefts on either side of the frog, we can end up with uh, some bacteria, we can end up with some infection there. And, and the thing that we need to uh, be mindful of is that the type of bacteria that's coming into play is anaerobic bacteria, that is bacteria that thrives in the absence of oxygen. And that all comes into play with a thrush issue. Of course, also along with the coloration, 
uh, as we clean the foot, we're going to pick up on an obnoxious odor, a smell, uh, a rotten smell, that of a, that of a rotten egg. And we might ask ourselves, what causes that particular smell when we have a thrush issue? Let's keep in mind that the hoof capsule itself is made up of protein. In fact, about 95% of this is actual protein itself. And this foot is actually, and the frog is held together by connective tissue proteins. Now, what holds those proteins together are cross links that are made up of sulfur. And as the bacteria eats and consumes the tissue uh, in the cloths on either side of the frog, uh, then they're going to excrete this uh, volatile compound and that's what creates the odor. <clears throat> or if you've ever been <clears throat> around a horse that's being hot shod, uh, or hot fitted, uh, that smell that we see is actually sulfur <clears throat> that's coming from the connective tissue that's being burnt in that particular process. <clears throat> now we need to we, we we need to stay on top of a thrush problem, and we don't want that thrush problem to get out of hand because if we do then the bacteria, the fungi can actually eat into and get to the sensitive part of the foot itself. And once again, uh, when we think about the anatomy, uh, the collateral sulcus comes into play, the central sulcus comes into play on either side of the frog. So actually thrush is the enemy of the frog itself. In fact, thrush is going to try to undermine uh, this particular part of the foot. And, and the frog plays an important part as well. It, it actually gives some support to the horse itself. It's also the outer covering of the digital cushion, which is right underneath the frog itself. And, and both the frog and the digital cushion act as a shock absorber uh, as this horse moves. And if we let thrush completely get out of hand, this bacteria, this fungi can actually consume the frog itself as we see in this particular slide. Let's talk about some contributing factors that come into play when we, when we talk about thrush. Well, a lot of that has to do with the environment. A lot of that has to do where we live, how much rain receive, we receive, how wet the conditions are. All that is a factor in thrush. Uh, a lot of our horses today will be stable. They'll be stalled quite a bit during the day. So we need to be mindful of how clean we keep our stalls, our paddocks. Uh, and as we mentioned earlier, one of the things that we need to be very mindful of is the type of bacteria. It's anaerobic, and th this is what we need to guard against. And hoof maintenance is a part of that process itself, where we actually take the time to pick up, to clean the foot, to allow oxygen on either side of the frogs, especially in the cloughs uh, uh, and the central sulcus as well. Uh, trimming is very important. Uh, in fact, we need to make sure during the trim that it's done properly. And, and the last thing that we see there is exercise and exercise is very important as well. As far as prevention, there's many things that we can do as well. And a lot of things that we're going to talk about, uh, well, we're going to repeat, but uh, we're going to take a look at three different things when it comes to thrush prevention. We're going to take a look at maintenance, uh, nutrition, and then we're going to take a look at the environmental factors that come into play in the prevention of thrush. 
We also need to be mindful that that horse owner is the one that pretty much sees that animal on a daily basis. And so hoof maintenance should be a daily objective of that horse owner, where they're actually seeing the animal, they know if there's any changes, especially in the movement of the animal, and especially if there's anything that's not normal as far as the foot itself, some tenderness, some ouchiness or whatever. And, and that should signal, send a signal to the horse owner that, hey, something might not be right. Of course, one of the things that the horse owner is going to be involved in daily is the daily picking up and cleaning of the foot. And when we keep the foot cleaned, especially on either side of the frog, in the central part of the frog, this allows the foot to breathe. And that's exactly what we want to do. Uh, and by doing that uh, and helping maintain a good, healthy soul frog itself, uh, this helps to improve and maintain the overall integrity of the hoof capsule. Of course, this needs to be done on a daily basis. And, and let's not be afraid to pick up the foot of the horse and continue to do this. And in this particular slide here, we, we have uh, a foot on the left that's in dire need of a good clean out. Uh, the foot on the right is the actual foot itself after the shoe has been removed, after the foot has been cleaned itself. And as you can see, we uh, everything is pretty much packed in and around the shoe, the needed oxygen to the foot is completely blocked. So that simply sets us up for this anaerobic bacteria. And as we see, take a look at the foot on the right hand side here, we can see the thrush that has been brought about, number one, from a lack of oxygen. Uh, we can also see that uh, in the old nail hose as well. So that's what we end up uh, with when we don't do a good job as far as maintenance, as far as picking the foot. Now, one of the things that we need to be mindful in picking the foot is, number one, we need to have an appropriate hoof pick. We're going to start at the heel and we're going to clean forward to the toe area, to the apex of the frog here, and we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. And then we're going to come to the central part of the frog, the central sulcus, and clean that is out as well. And as you can see in this particular diagram here, we still have quite a bit of black uh, thrushy area here. And I would like to see a little bit of this, more of this trimmed out. In fact, this foot has not been fully trimmed yet. In fact, there's a little area back here in this heel section as well that could be trimmed out just a little bit further. We need to maintain a regular farrier schedule, highly important. Uh, a trim is very important, a proper trim is very important in aiding the prevention of thrush. Because if we go too long before trim, our Frog a lot of times will want to uh, kind of overlap itself uh, and that uh, makes it very easy to trap this debris, uh, blocking the needed oxygen and that sets us up for our anaerobic problem then. And of course, depending on the horse itself, we may be looking at anywhere from a six to seven, eight week schedule but the, the bottom line, we need to maintain that regular schedule. Exercise. Exercise is very important as well to thrush prevention. And if you think about the foot itself and the way that it's made, the foot itself underneath is slightly concave. And as that horse uh, moves and as it uh, puts pressure on that foot, the sole of the foot it actually has the ability to flex and as that foot flex it's going to help self clean that foot 
and, and I'm sure that uh, any time that you turned a, a horse uh, out into the paddock and its horse, uh, the feet of the horse has not been cleaned and as that horse walks off and even goes to a trot, a lot of times you'll often see a lot of debris, dirt clots, it's going to come out from underneath the soles of that horse. That horse is self-cleaning. Nutrition. Nutrition plays a tremendous role, number one, in hoof quality and hoof growth. The point here is, is that if we have a good, healthy foot, we're less likely to have an issue with some of our secondary problems such as thrush, white line, and seedy toe. The one thing that the horse owner needs to strive for is to provide that animal with a balanced diet. And when we think about nutrition and what it does for the horse, uh, number one, what proper nutrition and a balanced nutrition is going to do is it's going to provide that horse what it needs nutritionally to grow and to maintain quality dermal tissue. And oftentimes when we incorporate a hoof supplement to the diet of the set of the horse, we, we often do that to improve hoof quality and hoof growth, but there are many other benefits uh, that are going to come about from feeding a, a hoof supplement itself. So a horse needs certain nutrients on a daily basis to grow good dermal tissue. In fact, the largest glandular organ in the horse is glandular uh, tissue. And, and this has to be replaced, it has to be replenished on a daily basis. So we need to ensure that those nutrients are being included in the diet on a daily basis, and not only included in the diet on the, a daily basis, but in the right proportion and ratio to each other. We know that a deficiency is going to create a problem, and an excess is going to create a problem as well. This is just a prime example of a diet that's not balanced. Of course, what we're, what we're shooting for in a balanced diet, uh, number one is a balance of protein, a balance of energy, a balance of minerals, a balance of vitamins, and a balance of amino acids. And as we take a look at this horse here, we can obviously visually see that this horse has a balance when it comes to energy or calories. They're simply too much in the diet of the horse. Of course, this whole horse is overweight, and just like humans that are overweight, then that eventually takes a toll on the human and on the horse as well. Uh, the horse is prone to metabolic problems and conditions, gonna work on the joint of the horse as well, actually gonna work on the foot of the horse as well, it's, as well at some point in time. A balanced diet uh, is going to provide the horse what it needs nutritionally on a daily basis. And, and even if we try to feed that balanced diet, sometimes we need a, still a little more help nutritionally as far as a hoof supplement to help improve hoof growth, hoof quality. And the bottom line with that is, if we have a good, healthy foot, uh, this foot is going to be more resilient to a microbial invasion. The environment takes a tremendous toll on the foot of the horse. And when we think about the environment, we're once again, we're thinking about wet conditions. Uh, we need to be mindful of our stalls. We need to be mindful of our turnouts. We want to uh, 
but with turnouts that are wet, that are muddy, that are soggy. And of course, all those are areas that are going to be highly infested with bacteria, with fungi, and as that horse has to live and stand in those areas, that's going to take a toll uh, on the foot uh, as well. Let's talk just a little bit about treatment. Treatment actually starts with prevention. Let's talk about some things that we can do to help treat thrush. Of course, a lot of these points go back to prevention itself and keeping the foot clean, picking the foot out, to brushing the foot off after we uh, have the, the foot picked out. In fact, we can actually incorporate a wire brush and that wire brush is going to help remove some of this necrotic tissue if that happens to be the problem at the time. Uh, a good thing to do would be to incorporate uh, an antimicrobial product as far as a topical or a clay uh, that's actually going to help kill and alleviate the fungal issue. Uh, and regardless of what product we choose to use, we need to make sure that we're allowing the foot to breathe in the process and so that we're not aiding in the cause of our thrush problem. We can also add our hoof supplement to the diet of the horse to improve the quality of the foot. And if we come across a, a foot that's questionable, that's extremely tender and sensitive, we, we need to involve our farrier and our veterinarian at that point in time. As far as some of our remedies and a lot of our home remedies, uh, they're often very toxic, very caustic, and not necessarily toxic, but caustic, meaning that they're going to chemically burn hoof tissue. And a lot of times I hear from horse owners that they have a cycle of thrush. They discover they have thrush, they use a product that's actually caustic to the foot of the horse. They eliminate the thrush problem. And then in the process, this caustic product that's been used, then this actually has killed hoof tissue. This dead necrotic tissue actually will block the needed oxygen from the foot of the horse. So we're setting ourselves up for another bacterial invasion in that this dead tissue becomes a food source. The lack of oxygen enhances the bacterial issue. We end up with new bacteria and then we're back to our thrush cycle again. So it's just a continuous cycle. We use a caustic chemical, we eliminate the thrush, we set ourselves back up for another invasion and then we end up with a new bacteria and we're back to the thrush itself. So let's be mindful of what we use to treat thrush and that it's non-caustic, it's safe to the tissue of the horse itself and that it doesn't block oxygen that's needed by the foot. Some products that we need to stay away from. Uh, turpentine number one, uh, formaldehyde. Uh, <clears throat> a, a lot of our home remedies will involve bleach and even diluted bleach, if we're not careful, will actually kill hoof tissue itself. Tar uh, actually is going to seal off the needed oxygen from the foot. I know a lot of folks will incorporate a little copper sulfate in uh, thrush treatment. <clears throat> and if we choose to do that, then we need to be very mindful of the amount that we use and we don't want to overdo that. In fact, it's just best to stay away from that if at all possible. The bottom line is this, when we're gonna treat thrush, if we can't put it on our own, on our own self, on our own skin, then let's not use it on the foot of the horse. 
Some recommended products that's going to aid in uh, the treatment, the prevention of thrush. The first one is a product that's made by Life Data Labs. Uh, it's called our hoof clay. It's an antimicrobial packing. It's a soft putty-like clay product that has some tea tree oil, some tame iodine in it. Uh, we can use it for specific problems, either within the hoof capsule or the sole of the foot as well. And when we talk about the, the, the hoof wall, uh, oftentimes we have chips and cracks. We have old nail holes. If that horse is being shod, uh, this product can be placed, packed into those particular areas there. If we have a thrush problem, then we can actually take the product, we can actually use our finger, and we can make an application to either side of the frog, and we can actually hit the central part of the frog as well. If our horse is shod, then an, another area that, that the product can be used is underneath the shoe, so if the farrier will actually coat that white line area, with the clay right before the, the shoe is nailed on, then that's going to help keep this white line area clean from a bacterial and fungal invasion. Uh, also, if we make an application in the white line area, as the nails are being driven into the hoof wall itself, then the nails pass through the clay and that's going to help protect these new entry points from, from the nail. Uh, it's a very safe, it's a very mild product, very easy to use. Once we make an application, uh, then we'll have enough residual under normal conditions for about three to four days, and then we can come back and we can do another application of the clay. Another product that's also produced by Life Data Labs comes in a liquid form. It has some of the same. Uh, antimicrobial ingredients as the clay, tea tree oil, and some tamed iodine. It's a product that will not block oxygen. It is a non-caustic product. It's very safe, very easy to use. Uh, essentially, this is going to go on the entire foot of the horse, the entire sole, the entire hoof wall. Uh, as far as the method of application, it can be brushed on, sponged on, uh, whatever means. The bottom line is just get it on the foot of the horse itself. Uh, another added benefit to Farrier's Finish besides the antimicrobial properties is that it contains a, a phospholipid compound and part of the environmental issues that we have to deal with is either excess or not enough moisture. And this particular compound has the ability to either shed the excess moisture or help retain the needed moisture depending on the particular environmental situation at the time. Both products can be used safely together. In fact, we would use the clay first in our specific problem areas, and then we'll use the uh, liquid product, the finish next, and, and it goes on the entire foot right over the top of the clay itself. As far as hoof quality and hoof growth, uh, Farrier's formula has been around for many years. In fact, it's been, been available for right at 40 years now. It's a proven uh, hoof supplement. Uh, it is a supplement that was developed by Dr. Frank Gravely, whom done extensive research on problems uh, on horses with foot issues, and he done that through extensive blood work in trying to determine, number one, what the nutritional needs of those horses were, and after he uh, made those particular findings. He actually put together Farrier's formula, which uh, helps to improve dermal tissue in the horse. And of course, this is a supplement that we're going to feed daily, along with what we're feeding our horse. Uh, it's not an overnight fixed, and typically it can take as long as a year to completely regenerate, regrow, 
that old foot and replace it with a much improved foot, which is going to be more resilient to an invasion of bacteria and fungi. We want to thank you for spending the time with us. And if you have any questions, we would be glad to entertain those at this time. Okay, again, um, if you look at the right hand side uh, of your computer, you'll see a little drop down uh, menu from the GoToWebinar. Uh, you can open that up to enter in any of your questions. Uh, feel free to do that right now. Um, in the meantime, I'll go ahead and uh, ask Mike a few that we have. And, um, and again, if you have some, just feel free to send them and just make sure to hit send or, we'll, or else we won't see them. All right, um, let's see. Okay, uh, Mike, uh, so, so can, can we use, um, I guess, watered down bleach to treat thrush? Even watered down bleach, if we're not careful, can still burn and kill hoof tissue. Now, the problem with using a caustic type problem uh, product like that is this. If we have a severe case of thrush and that thrush has gotten down into sensitive tissue, it's going to burn and actually kill that new tissue. And we don't want to do that. And at some point, if we continue to burn that uh, sensitive tissue, our horse is going to say, hey, you're not going to do that anymore. So it can actually lead to a behavioral problem in the horse as well. Okay, uh, next question, Mike. Um, can the hoof clay be used under a plastic or leather pa uh, pad without any adverse effects? Yes, it can. In fact, uh, any farrier will know how to use the hoof clay, uh, and it's been used under many, many horses with leather pads with, with no problems whatsoever. Um, how do you know uh, when your horse needs treatment? Uh, my horse seems to have a small amount of thrush in the sulcus and around the white line. Bayer says it's nothing. He is not sore. Well, it sounds like you only have a minor issue at this time, but when you pick the foot, if you see the blank, then that tells that should tell you that, yes, you do have a minor case of thrush. If you smell that, that's uh, another indicator that you have a case of thrush. And if you do, then I would want to uh, be very mindful. We want to go ahead and make some form of a treatment, whether that's clay or the finish. We just don't want that to get out of hand. Okay. Uh, with a severe case of thrush and some lameness, is it possible to treat and eventually not have lameness? Yes, if you'll, I think with the help of a farrier and veterinarian, if needed, and if you'll follow some of the recommendations that we've made uh, during the webinar, yes, you can end up with a foot that's good, sound, and solid with no lameness. Okay, and then uh, we had a, another question asking again about the about the clay under a plastic pad. So would you like to just hit that on that one? Yes, there's there's no issue in using clay underneath a plastic pad or a leather pad, either one. Works fine, works perfect. Okay. Um, and then how does the clay not block oxygen? The clay <clears throat> doesn't block oxygen. The clay is actually able to breathe itself. In fact, it is actually clay. And if you think about soil, a plant <clears throat> that's being that has been planted into the soil, the roots of that plant actually have to has to take up oxygen. So it's the same principle as that there. Uh, can you put the liquid finish on the sole too? Absolutely. In fact, it'll go on the entire sole of the foot and the entire hoof wall as well. Okay, we are starting to uh, wrap up the last few questions. So again, if you have one, make sure uh, to ask it. Uh, we'll go ahead and finish up these last few, um, and then we'll we'll go from there. Let's see. Um, can a barefoot 
to a shod horse, is there a difference in how they get thrush? It's basically the same. You you have uh, uh, debris or build up into the grooves on either side of the frog, whether that horse is shod or whether that horse is barefoot. Same principle. Okay. Uh, should I use the clay on minor thrush? Absolutely. It can be used as a preventative, and if you just have a minor case, it would be an excellent product to use in a situation like that. Let's see. All right, one another one just came in. Uh, thrush has severely affected my mare's frog to the point where it seems almost eaten away. Will Ferris formula supplement help the frog grow back? Yes, it will. In fact, it, it, it'll take some time to do that, but that new growth is actually going to start at the coronary band, and over a period of some time, Ferris formula is going to help completely regenerate that entire foot and regrow the frog in the process as well. Of course, we need to also incorporate uh, some form of an antimicrobial to fight off uh, any bacterial or fungal issue that's already gone that's already taken place and is still going on at this point in time. And either the clay or the finish or a combination of both will do that for you. Okay, uh, Mike, uh, which product do you recommend to help control during this wet weather that we have? The product that I would recommend for wet weather conditions is going to be the finish because it's actually going to help shed that excess moisture from the hoof capsule itself. And, and let me make this point too, regardless when you use a topical for the foot of the horse, the ideal foot to make that application to is going to be a dry foot, number one. And that allows the product to penetrate and to be absorbed into the hoof capsule and the sole of the foot. Of course, if you live in extremely wet conditions, I know that's a hard situation to deal with. And sometimes it's going to be an, it's going to involve actually putting the horse up into a stall. Uh, shavings work quite well in helping to dry that foot out. Uh, and this one's not a question, but it came in from uh, Miss Ada Gates. She says, "I love hoof clay and farrier's finish and all the supplements uh, using for a foundered horse with positive results." Thank you, Ada Gates. Okay. Um, how do the hoof cracks turn to thrush? Anytime you have an imperfection such as a crack, that's just an entry point for bacteria and fungi. And that actually gives a start uh, to thrush. Okay, I believe that is that is it. Again, if you have another question, you got a few more minutes to uh, to put it in before we end our webinar. Um, but again, I want to thank everybody who came and, and watched the webinar today. Um, you can visit lifedatalabs.com. Uh, that is our website. We've got more articles and, and blogs about thrush, white line disease, uh, more information on equine nutrition. And, um, oh, we've got one more. Does, uh, does thrush and nail holes lead to abscesses? That's a good question in itself. Uh, I would say that uh, there would be a possibility, yes. Of course, there are many factors that involve when we have an abscess. So I'd say yes, possibly yes. Um, so uh, again, uh, you can visit lifedatalabs.com. Uh, you can read some more of these articles. Uh, we're hoping in the future to do some more webinars. Uh, so please join us on our next one. Uh, when we have that, we'll be sending out um, e you know, emails. You can follow us on social media, on Facebook. We'll have more information on there. And, um, and we've recorded this webinar, so we'll be able to post it and, and have, it on, uh, have it on YouTube so you can watch it again or share it with some friends. Um, but again, thank you guys. Uh, thank everybody and hope everyone has a wonderful week. Thank you.